Good evening and welcome to the next episode. Today I am going to cover the last of the five A's, which I decided to call ambiguity. But before I go there, I want to mention something about A social, which I failed to cover last time. This is the photo of my office. Every time I come into my office, I switch on these two fans and the lights. So how come? As soon as I switch on one of them, all of them switch on by themselves. Why couldn't that happen? Now, obviously, the designers of the fans and lights couldn't conceptualize that because technology didn't allow them to. Now we can use IoT and other things to possibly do what I'm talking about. Similarly, cars cannot talk to each other. The TV cannot talk to the fan. So almost any device is a social. Right? So this a social is quite pervasive because designers of most systems have limitations which prevented them from making them social. So it is quite pervasive, not just restricted to IT systems. Now moving on to ambiguity. This is the television remote from my house. Now first time I picked it up, which button am I supposed to push? So it's so complicated with all these buttons, right? This one is my microwave from my kitchen. Again, the same thing. It is complicated. First time I looked at it, I didn't know which button to push. How do I actually microwave something? Because it has convection oven, many features bundled into the same device. Which led me to think that what exactly is the design problem here? This is what I decided to call the ambiguity anti fraud so whenever a decisioning input is not clear, the, des the designers abdicated that to the human beings. So in the television remote, I could be playing Netflix or go to Google Play, change the channel. I could be forwarding or reversing a video. Since the designers couldn't predict what I was going to do, they provisioned for all those options. Same with the microwave which made the interface so complicated that it is hard to use. Right, so you can see that this is uh, quite a big problem across many industries, not just IT systems. Now you can say that automobile is a very extreme case of this ambiguity. All the controls to drive the car have been provided, but the car cannot drive itself. So everything had to be done by the human being, which you can say is now solved by the self-driving car. So again, this ambiguity antifractal exists in many industries. Let's go back to IT and look at the same leave system that I covered last time. I have seen cases where the type of leave field had almost 20 options in the drop down. Now, why did the designers do that? Because they couldn't exactly predict which type of leave your somebody is going to take. So in a large organization, all the 20 may be used right at some point in time. So they had to provision for all of it. With the result that in the case of IT systems, you can say all drop down menus, radio buttons or any other decisions the users have to make ambiguity anti fractal exists and it could be a machine learning opportunity to transform that area assuming the business case can be built i think this is probably the biggest opportunity reports and dashboards or more broadly business intelligence i look at this graph and what am i supposed to do i am supposed to interpret the graph decide what is going on what decision i have to make now with machine learning can i not auto suggest those decisions to the human being so this is a massive opportunity and ambiguity i think of the five years that i've talked about this is the one of the biggest opportunities for digital transformation now let me give you one more example from the it transformation the one cognizant program that i often talk about we had this situation where a number of transactions were waiting for approvals travel was held up there are just simply many transactions which uh, were held up because the managers, the supervisors hadn't yet approved those transactions. Now, if you think about the ambiguity anti-fractal, all of them, because approval is a human decision that has been abdicated to the supervisors and 
management stakeholders. So this was a very frustrating for everybody. But in each system, the approval transaction was another screen, which means the system would send the approval request by email to the management stakeholder and that person had to click through to that system, that page and then approve it. Now, if they are traveling somewhere, uh, they would have to find an internet connection, boot up the laptop and do it, which, which was quite cumbersome for them as they were all traveling extensively. Now, as you know, we also had this uh, goal of a 500% productivity gain, no change management and so on. So this is was a hard problem to solve. So one of our teammates came up with a brilliant idea of an email approval tool. So what we did was we created a simple email approval kind of system. So any approval request will be first sent to this email approval software, which will send a link to the user and they simply have to reply approved or rejected with the transaction details. And whatever they replied, we would parse that and post it back into the original transaction system. So this made management stakeholders job dramatically easier because they could do the approvals from their Blackberries or later on their smartphones as well. So this is how we made use of this ambiguity anti fractal Why did approvals get abdicated to the management user because it's ambiguous whether a transaction should be approved or not. So it's a human decision. So you can see how this pattern plays out over and over. And I still see IT systems don't have the email approval facility in many companies. Now let me also take this opportunity to be the first to wish you all a fantastic happy new year 2021 and happy holidays. With that, I thank you all for listening.